So this is the Honeywell T10 thermostat, and I was in the market for a new thermostat. I want need to replace so my broken one, and I was looking for a few different things for my thermostat. Um, I needed something that was obviously compatible with my current system, which uses a um, heat pump and with auxiliary heating strips for when it gets really cold outside. I also need to control my AC. Um, also, one big thing is the I needed humidifier control. And that's something that only a few other thermostats can do, like the higher end Nest third generation and the even the Nest second generation can do it. Um, Echo B, like the latest Echo B5, and probably some of the older Echo Bs probably could do it. And none of the, the like Echo B Lite or the Nest Lite can control the health loss humidifier, but um, this T10 could. Another thing I wanted was a control of my Google Home with it. I'd be able to control it with my Google Home. I also wanted the ability to use an app with it so I could you know, do some fine, fine adjustments if I wanted to without having to go to this control panel. You guys must be wondering why I don't have like something like an Echo Bee or an S on this wall. And if any of you guys saw my video that I did last year about repairing MOSFETs on a Nest thermostat, you can understand that, um, again, I did have issues, more issues with the MOSFETs I, after I replaced them a year ago. Uh, they failed again. so. I decided that um, I wanted to try something else instead of using instead of using something like um, MOSFETs, which are these little things right here. Granted, when you're, they're in your nest, they're going to be much even smaller than this. I just want something with a relay, and the thing about a relay is like when you go to a thermostat like this and you turn it on, you hear like a couple of clicks or a click, and that's a relay actuating. So it's a this is actually an electromagnetic switch that turns on. It's kind of like when you're a kid and you wrapped like a coil, a piece of copper coil around a, a nail, then attached to a battery to pick up to pick up like some paper clips. Well, kind of the same concept except for um, this, the yellow part is kind of the nail right here, and then the switch part of it is like the um, paper clips. So you're what you're doing is it's using the magnet to electromagnetic to pull the switch closed, and then it closes the circuit and turns on the fan or the compressor or whatever. Uh, on the other hand, like your thermostats, like your Nest or your Echo, B uses MOSFETs, and MOSFETs, I love them. They're great. People, you know, question why I'm looking for a, a thermostat for, that has relays instead of MOSFETs. People think that MOSFETs are amazing. They are amazing. They have they're great for what they, you know, for what they're intended to. They have very fast switching times. Something that this one can never match. They're great for your VR, like a VRM on a computer, um, to control your voltage for your CPU. I mean, this definitely has its intended purpose. They, they're efficient, they're smaller, um, and they have, you know, in terms of mechanical wear, they don't have that. But there's some advantages that this thing does. I mean, the reason why these things are still being used, and probably the reason why Honeywell is using them as opposed to MOSFETs. And the thing with this is this can take a lot more current, a lot more voltage than these can. And while your NIST thermostat might be great for, you know, your system and might be worked for years, the issue is, as as people do, your system, your HVA system does age. And just as people do, things don't work like they should or don't work as well as they used to. And, you know, you might you might take a bit more current to actuate that reversing valve. It might, you might have a voltage spike or, you know, you, the voltage might be higher than what it should be. And the issue with um, running something like a Nest with, with the MOSFETs um, is that, you know, it will slowly damage these until they they just fell closed. So they're just transmitting power through it. So in my case, I had a reversing valve that kept actuating, um, going back and forth because the 24 volt was activated. And this it, these all use 24 AC for the power. Granted, it probably use, it uses DC and much lower voltages, uh, you know, on the logic level for these things. But um, uh, controlling your HVA system uses 24 AC. So. That, that's the main reason why I wanted to get um, a thermostat that had relays as opposed to MOSFETs because, in my opinion, this will last a lot longer. And, you know, my my HVA system, again, I, the Nest worked great for, like, you know, seven years I had on it, but, you know, it's old enough to drink, basically. And should I really, you know, upgrade, you know, my pay, like, eight, eight grand for a new HVA system so I can run Nest? Not really. And the question is, you know, ask people as your HVA system all oh, ages, how well will your um, your Nest or your Echo be aged with it? Will it will the MOSFETs fail? You know, I've heard 
I've heard about, you know, this has happened quite a few different times, especially with the second gen um, Nest. It seems like it's um, more of an issue with them. Um, but, I mean, that's the relays can take a lot more, a lot more current, a lot more voltage. They're not really, they don't really have that same problem. Matter of fact, there are some professional Nest installers that actually install isolation relays. And, you know, if you buy something like the Honeywell T10, there's no real need to, um, there's no real need to do that because they, it uses relays already. So it's MOSFETs versus, versus relays, you know, it de there's, it depends on the application. And, you know, you really, I think it's, I'm happy that I got something, was able to find something with a relay. You know, just like, just trying to compare, you know, these two thermostats, like um, uh, this Nest feels like it's built like a tank. Like, I mean, it's, it reminds me of my phone. Like, you know, you can drop, feels like you could drop it. I mean, this is right here. It's made out of plastic, you know. But, you know, at the same time, I've had plastic thermostats for years. Never had, you're not going to slip out of your pocket and fall, break. So, I mean, it, I'm fine with it. Like, it, that's not a huge thing if it's, you know, doesn't have a stainless steel rotating um, crown on it. Or, it's, you know, tempered glass. But this does have, um, it does have a touch pad, touch screen. And, you know, it's, in my opinion, it's not the most response. It's not like a buttery, buttery smooth response like on my phone. But, I mean, it's it's more than adequate. And to be honest, like trying to enter your well, like Wi-Fi password or something when you're setting it up is a lot more pain because you have to go through like, you know, 36 different potential combinations of, or at least of letters and numbers while you can just use this as a, as a keypad. So, um, another thing, you know, to note, like this is not a Nest thermostat box, but, um, you know, the packaging is like nowhere near as like, I mean, this is kind of just like your cheap old, package that you would get with like you know a lot of different things out there but you know you you kind of get more of the iPhone experience with uh, Google appliance but to be to be honest I really don't care about these I mean reason why I'm showing this this Nest Hello as opposed to my Nest thermostat box is because I threw these away I threw it away a long time ago who cares about this it's gonna be tossed anyway and you know you wonder how much how many trees were harmed in the making of this box compared to this one who knows Another thing I really liked about the Honeywell thermostat is that this right here uses um, AA batteries, which are easy, easily sourced. They're not, not not expensive. Versus like the like the little little coin cell that goes into think inside the nest, and I think the Echo B uses like one of those fat barrel batteries that that are not as not as common as like you know your typical uh, AAA batteries. So. And this is really nice to see. It also does have a motion sensor, so it can detect motion. It's nice I can set like, um, well, what, both. I know the Echo Beast, I think, kind of started this whole um, motion sensor and temp sensor fad. And, you know, I kind of like it. It's not, it's not going to make your house more cool efficiently. It'll be make your house more comfortable. Like, for example, like when it's a hot day outside, the um, upstairs can get warm when it's cold outside but very sunny. This floor where we have a lot of windows will get warm, but the basement will get really cold and the upstairs will get hot. So uh, unless you have actual control of different dampers, I mean, and can, and can control, um, you have multiple zones in your house, uh, uh, it's, this is not going to make it efficient. This can just really make it more comfortable um, wherever you are. So at night, you know, we're going to, we can have this set to the master bedroom where we have one sensor. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I work from home usually. So, uh, and I work in the basement, which can get Kind of uncomfortable so I set it to be set it to use the basement sensor on you know during the hours when I'm working from home so this has a lot of flexibility but it won't save you money unless you like have like you know multi multi um, zone system it it's not the prettiest thing but you know my wife actually likes it more than having the nest here the echo bee to me kind of sticks out a lot more because it's this gigantic black um, box that hangs on your wall this it's white so it kind of more blends in so it's just not as noticeable and uh, my wife really liked that and if that's good for her I like it too again using the little touch screen made it easier to enter things in it's it might have not been as easy to set up as like a nest but it gives you a lot of different options and you can I paid about a hundred eighty dollars for this and it came with one sensor I got an additional sensor off um, Amazon for like 28 bucks um, compared to the nest which is like I think 250 20 60 dollar comes with one sensor and you can actually sync up all the sensors to have it kind of take the average of the house or set it to one sensor during one time or to use two sensors. So 
Um, we have two sensors and this, so we can adjust it, which is neat. I can also do like geolocation, uh, it's something I really have no interest in using. Um, I just want to kind of you know set it as a time. I, and when it came to Nest, I hated the like the smart you know auto adjusting thing. I prefer just setting you know you know the times when to have setbacks when to not. There's quite a few a little features that I like about this. You know, it was a little bit more complex to set up. I think I know a lot more about the HVA system than I did than when I bought my Nest. Uh, so I actually did have to look up a few different things. You know quickly googling what does this mean it seems like a lot of the systems you can just kind of go with more so what's what it's recommending or the uh, default um, I I customized a couple things uh, based off what I wanted like I didn't want um, my heat strip to just automatically come on when there's a too huge of a difference between this and the and the temperature I was setting it to so like overall I'm excited about it I'm happy I got rid of a nest I'm happy that I have relays you know, actuating, you know, things off and on. One of the easy things I did like about the thermostat, if you want to control your whole house humidifier, you just plug it directly into here while the Nest actually had to buy a separate, um, a separate relay to control that. This, you already have that relay integrated in here, so you can just pull out the humidistat that you have and plug it directly in here and it'll control it. I mean, it was, you know, there are a couple things I do admit I had to look Google, but you know, uh, this costs about 180 bucks, and if you really wanted to, you could, I think, it'd pay like somebody to come out for 80 bucks to install it and set it up. Or you can just buy a second sensor, and it's still cheaper than a Nest or Echo B. So, you know, I'm happy with it. I would definitely suggest it if you're in a market for a thermostat. You know, I think it's cool that Honeywell finally decided to try to make something that was more tech friendly. It seemed like they kind of just really didn't make any advancements and I think the Nest Nest came around and Echo B and I'm glad that Honeywell's, you know, caught up. I mean they still have, you know, ways to go if they want to get, you know, the people that you know, are like really want, you know, a, a like a rotating bezel, you know, have something that's made out of stainless steel. But you know, to me this is fine. You know, there's a place for it. I think this is a good balance of, you know, old knowledge of, you know, how an HVA system works with the proper and you know, kind of newer technology integration. And I've been happy with it. Um, one concern I had when I did buy it is I did see some reviews that mentioned disconnecting internet. Um, actually, it's kind of funny. Three days after I bought it, um, I lost connection to the internet with this. And I've, I'm, the first thing that came to my mind were the reviews, but it actually wasn't Honeywell at all. It was Microsoft Azure went down. And it actually impacted well, the company I work with, um, which has nothing to do with HVAC or Honeywell's Microsoft Azure is a cloud computing. Um, it impacted a lot of different companies. So, you know, as soon as Azure was back up and running, uh, the, it reconnected and was fine. So, like anything internet related, you know, uh, was from, you know, that Microsoft Azure outage or, you know, my ISP drops the connection for the whole house for like, you know, a minute or two. But, you know, other than that, it's been great. I have no complaints and I highly recommend this, you know, after using for a couple of weeks, you know, especially in a mood, especially if you're in the market for a new thermostat. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, you know, maybe I'll do another review after a year, but you know, hopefully this is something I forget about and we, you know, just continue to use it. I mean, that's kind of what you want in this type of situation. You know, you're, you want a new thermostat or your old thermostat broke. And I think they did a great job. If you have any questions, feel free to post, feel free to subscribe if you want to hear random tech um, reviews and my thoughts about them. Um, thank you very much.